Welcome to Jamie's Garage. When your disc of valve fails, you're either going to replace it or rebuild it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild it and make it better than new. Let's go. Now we're going to rebuild the disc of valve. What is a disc of valve? Well, it controls the air that moves through the intake manifold by opening or closing this valve. When the disc of valve is closed at low RPMs, the air travels through a long single tube in the intake manifold, producing velocity, creating better torque. Then at high RPMs, the valve opens, providing more air volume, giving you more horsepower. These disc of valves typically last 80 to 100,000 miles before any problems occur, and problems do occur, causing symptoms like rattling noises from the engine area, loss of power at mid or high RPMs, lack of low end torque, poor fuel economy, or even a check engine light for lean running conditions. The most common failure is the seal that's molded into the case. As you can see right here, it's flattened out over time and can cause a lean running condition by allowing unmetered air into the intake. This usually happens after the valve's been removed and then installed for other service work. The worst failure comes from this pivot pin right here holding the flap in place. It can loosen and fall out and make its way into the intake where you can say goodbye to your engine. Good job, BMW. We're going to address both of these issues with a rebuild kit not available from BMW because BMW will only sell you the disc of valve as a complete assembly. Before installing the repair kit, we need to check a few things first. I check to make sure that the housing is in good condition with no cracks or damage. This valve has a diaphragm inside that we need to check. I close the valve, placing my thumb over the vent hole sealing the diaphragm. Then I let go of the flap. It'll move slightly, but then hold. This indicates that the diaphragm is good. If the diaphragm was leaking, the flap would just open fully while I sealed the vent hole with my thumb. And in that case, the entire disc of valve would need replaced. Let's get started rebuilding this disc of valve by removing this cover with my pocket pry bar. That gives us access to the bell crank and the vacuum actuator. Now I remove the retaining clip and slip the actuator rod off the bell crank lever and move the actuator rod out of the way. I now use this giant screw included in the kit as a removal tool. I thread it into the plastic bell crank, then use needle nose pliers to pry it out, leveraging against the DISA housing. Now that the bell crank has been extracted, let's inspect it because this is another very common failure of these DISA valves. The hex edges you see here actually look pretty good. I've seen these get completely rounded off because, you know, plastic parts. It then creates extra clearance in the flap, causing that rattling noise that I was talking about earlier. The next step is to remove this pressed pin by wedging a screwdriver between the housing frame and the end of the flap and gently prying and twisting until you see the pin start to extract enough to get a thin pair of side cuts in there so you can pull it the rest of the way out. This little guy right here has fallen out and ruined many engines, but not on my watch, not this time. Now that the pin and ball crank lever are removed, the flap basically just falls out. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the original plastic flap assembly versus the new anodized aluminum assembly. As you can see, besides being aluminum, the major design change is the pin, where it now threads through the entire flap assembly with zero chance of it falling out. This is what BMW should have done from the start. Before assembly, we need to clean the carbon from the DISA housing, and I need to make sure nothing clogs this vacuum port. A toothpick is a good idea to shove in there while you're cleaning. I don't have a toothpick, so I'm just really careful here. Now that it's all clean, it's time to lube our crank. We only want to lube the base of the bell crank, not the tip. You'll see why in just a moment. I slide the bell crank into the disc valve and install the actuator rod. I then clean the tip of the bell crank to make sure it's free of any grease. The tip of the bell crank is inserted into the flap and even though it's a tight machine tolerance, we use red thread locker in the female side of the flapper valve to make up any lost clearances. You don't want to use too much here because you don't want to have extra overflow into the bearing. While installing the flapper valve, pay attention to the notch in the valve in relation to the frame. Now we install the flap and with the opposite hand, slide the bell crank into the flap. The screw is installed next, but first I install lock washer and then a little thread locker. After installing the screw, I check for proper operation of the valve and for any excessive play. This flattened molded seal has to be scraped away to make room for a new O-ring. This does take some time and patience. It's very important to get all the little remnants out so the groove is as clean as possible. I then grease the new O-ring and slip it on. We now have a complete rebuilt DISA that's better than new. 
This disavow video was from the M54 engine build that I did for Chris Fix. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put a link at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.